Hello traders and welcome to another Bitcoin price prediction video. So in today's video we're going to be using Elliott Wave Theory and Fibonacci analysis and volume to look at where we think that uh, Bitcoin is going to end up. So my last video I had made I had predicted that we were in an uptrend from around the 14th to the 15th around that uh, time I'd said I think that this is going to turn bullish and there are three reasons why I think that Ethereum is about to turn into a new uptrend and just a quick 30 second reason to why I think I thought that was was because of this very large bullish volume here this low tail and then also MFI being oversold for the first time uh, in the history of Bitcoin on the daily chart so for the past year uh, Bitcoin has never been oversold uh, and this is a really good sign for um, bulls because that means that a lot of retail traders and a lot of more amateur traders sold during this downtrend which caused this low tail and then price went upward which is quite bullish because if you remember you always want to be doing what the crowd is not doing um, if, you, if you're going to make money in the markets and if many people are selling then that price is a bargain and if many people are buying then that price is a bargain to sell so and that's another reason why I predicted this point because I'd gone on, uh, I looked around the internet for some other predictions just to see where I was at. Many people were predicting that this would continue into a downtrend and that actually gave me more confidence that, uh, that no, they, they can't be right. This has to turn into an uptrend because whenever, like, like I just said, whenever many traders think that something's gonna happen, typically the opposite does because of just overbought, oversold dynamics. If everyone buys something, the price can't go up and if everyone sells something, then if no one else can sell, then the price can't really go down. Uh, so beyond that little spiel, let's get into where I think we are for Bitcoin. So the first thing I'm going to do, which I have not done yet, is to look at the larger degree, the three-day. And what I see here is another Elliott wave count. And what I'm going to do is start my count right here for wave one, because this is when Bitcoin began to get uh, a lot more popular around this point which is March 2017. It was still popular before, but if we look at trading volume, uh, it's really escalated around here-ish. I think this is wave one, two, three, four. Uh, and just those who like Fibonacci analysis, uh, this, this wave two is 50% of this, and this wave four is 50% of this wave three. So that means that we are likely in a wave five for Bitcoin. Uh, and I think that this wave five is gonna take us beyond 5,000 within the coming uh, weeks. Now let's go on to the daily on a slightly less degree and let's talk about this individual uh, right here, this individual uptrend that just began. So what I see here is this is a one, this is a two, and then we just began wave three. And the reason why I think that is if we look here and use this as our uh, Fibonacci origin point, and the reason I'm doing that is because in my previous video I talked about how uh, this point, wave C, was 1.618, uh, the 1.618 extension of wave A, uh, down to here. Uh, the calculation was, that point makes a lot more sense for using it in our, cal in our Fibonacci uh, calculation. Uh, and we can use this one as well, because it, it's more extreme. It is the ultimate low of this period, but still, I'm, I'm going to be using both. So if we look here and just draw a Fibonacci uh, retracement off of wave 1, we can see the price had a tail at the 61.8 and then rebounded upward. If we look, draw another tail down here, we can see that at that same exact point, sorry. We can see, uh, it's not let me draw. If we draw another Fibonacci, we can see at this same exact point at the 35, uh, 36 level just about, the 3500, we had the 50% of this. So with this being the 50% and this being the 0.618, this is a really good spot um, of bullish movement. And you can also confirm this with a um, morning star formation if you're familiar with candlestick patterns where you get uh, a downtrend, a doji, and then a bullish candle here to begin wave three. <coughs> um, and just looking at volume here, volume for wave two was moderate, was decently high. And then we had uh, not the best volume here but that, this might have been because uh, Gemini was down for that day. Um, so you should take that into consideration. So th obviously there wouldn't be um, much higher volume because the exchange wasn't operating. 
And but this point's quite important. When when we went down from uh, after this candle, the selling volume was very low, meaning that when price went down, the sellers weren't that active and weren't that enthusiastic about dip, um, dumping their Ethereum. So I think that the, and then this candle right here, which still has another seven hours to close uh, before it prints its final volume count, uh, already has around double the volume that this one had. So as just a very easy rule of thumb, this bullish volume is already twice as high as this bearish volume. So you could say that the bullish traders here are twice as active as the bearish traders as of now. And yeah, that's where I think we are with uh, this. I'm gonna give more definite um, price points though. So one price point that I see um, as the most probable end of wave three, again, one, two, now we're in wave three, is 5,000. And this isn't just an arbitrary uh, resistance point. It, it is resistance, as you can see back here in early September. But also this point is the 1.618 extension of wave one. So basically what that means is wave one went up around $900 from here to here. Uh, and again, I had to explain why I use this point for my origin, for my wave count. Went around 900, and if you do 900 times 1.618, and then add that to the low of this, you get 49.66. So um, that's very close to 5K. So I, I think around the 49.50 to 5K area will probably be the end of wave three. That would make a lot of sense because uh, again, powerful resistance here and a lot of volume around the this area right here. Uh, these two candlesticks and uh, the, 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 this candlestick as well. So I think that this area is gonna be some resistance. But if wave one is equal to wave three, then this price will likely end at 4,400. Um, so if you see significant bearish movement at 4,400, it's safe to assume that this is the end of wave three. And I wrote down 4,200 and also 4,300 because the only reason I wrote that down was because of this. Um, 4,300 is the 61.8. Uh, retracement of this so just watch out for the for around the 4300 because that level might be some uh, additional resistance as well uh, but I still think that the 4400 is going to be a touch because that would be the end of wave three so yeah just a quick recap before we go into the hourly for some more short-term price predictions I think that uh, likely is wave three is a 1.618 extension goes up to five thousand um, dollars Typically, wave threes are 1.618 extensions, and the reason for that is that is when the majority of the bullish crowd gets in on the market. Uh, wave one, this is just psychology-wise for wave counts. Basically, wave one is when the smarter investors and the institutional traders, JP Morgan, get into the market. And um, then wave two is a, is a heavy sell-off, as many, many uh, traders who had bought this think that the uh, the trend's just going to continue downward, as you can see like here. You have that trend line. A lot of them sell here-ish, and then price goes down for wave two. And then we can see here it goes to the 61.8 of, um, of this level. And then at the 61.8, it makes a tail and rebounds. And again, if you had put a buy, uh, buy order at around the 3,500, then you would have made a substantial amount of money uh, off this with very little... Well, I mean, this is 2020 hindsight, but still... The, the 0.618 retracement is so powerful, and you can really see it here. Um, with this support level to this resistance level, just draw the retracement, you can see the price hits this, immediately rebounds. So if you had put a buy order here, you would have been golden. Even if you had just um, stayed up, uh, if, if this was night for you, and then just waited for price to hit that 61.8 to see, you know, does this look like it could become support, or is the downtrend gonna uh, continue? Uh, then you still would have made probably a good deal of money. I think that point would be right here, yeah. Yeah, that's where the 3510 is. So if you had been here and you had seen this, this might have been kind of hard to buy, uh, but you can kind of see a bit of an inverse head and shoulders here. Uh, maybe your buying spot, I think, probably would have been this because you would have you would have seen this and then you would have bought at the 61.8 of this uh, sub-degree, of this sub-degree. And then if you hadn't bought here, I think buying here would have been golden too. Uh, very strong bullish candle, a Marabazu, meaning it has no tails, uh, and great volume too.
So I think this would have been a good buy, and then you would have uh, caught this. So, Additionally, on the hourly, I do think this is wave three, as you can see, from 3510 to probably around 5K, or possibly 4400 as well, uh, if wave one equals wave three. What I see here is w within wave three, uh, and if you haven't seen my Elliott Wave Count uh, series, I would recommend that you watch that before you uh, listen to this because this is going to be talking about uh, subwave counts, which is a little bit more complicated, but really not that hard to understand if you understand the um, original wave counts. So within wave, within wave three, we have subwave counts of wave one, two, and now this looks like a third wave. And those who are familiar with Elliott wave analysis know that wave three of wave three is typically the strongest. So the very middle of an uptrend is typically the most uh, where, where you see the most bullish movement not where you see the most volume uh, that's usually at the uh, origin and at the very top that's where you see the most volume but you see a lot of bullish movement within wave three of uh, wave three which we can kind of see here so yeah like i'd said we had a wave one here perfectly goes down to the 61.8 right here great buying opportunity if you had, if you were a savvy trader who had seen this uh, and then uh, after wave two we get uh, wave three and now we might get wave four to come down to around these levels. And you might be wondering, well, why do you think price is going to go down uh, in the short term? It's because of this. If you just look at wave two and do the 1.618 extension, we can see here that uh, this is the 1.618 extension of uh, wave two. So that means that we could see a wave, a sub wave four coming to around the 3,800 something levels. <laughs> Around, around this original resistance point right here. Um, and then price rebounds off of that um, resistance level. So that could happen as well. Price could just come down here and continue its uptrend. That would make a lot of sense too. Um, yeah, so I've given you guys the hourly, the daily, and the three day. The three day being the super, the, like, uh, super, sub, super degree uh, wave count for what's going on with Bitcoin. And I've also given the most important one, which is probably the daily, uh, right here. And yeah, just to recap, uh, we have a one, two, possible three to the 5K, possible three to the 4.4K, uh, and then um, a wave four that will probably be around 38.2%. And this, this is quite important. Uh, if, if you get a few things from this video, one, I would say uh, bullish, uh, two, the 44 and the 5K, and then also the third point that I haven't made yet is if you're aware of the rule of alternation with wave counts, typically what that means is that if wave two retraces 61.8%, typically wave four is going to retrace 38.2. Uh, that's just what you see in waves, where having a wave two and a wave four that both retrace 61.8 is probably not a healthy uptrend. You want to see uh, the sellers and the take profiters alternating and how much they, they dip price. So I think we might see uh, up to 5K. And if I'm just gonna draw, for the last thing I'm doing here, just gonna draw my imaginary 5K here, around there. The 38.2 is, is around 4,400, which kind of makes sense because then there's this. Resistance, resistance here, some resistance here as well. And then if also we get some like resistance here when price goes up to the 4,400, dips a bit and then goes to the 5K, then price could also come down to the 4,400 because that would be future resistance becoming future support. Uh, that's really theoretical right now. That That's just an imaginary wave count of what could happen, but it would make a lot of sense that price goes down to the 38.2 and then resumes wave five. Um, so yeah, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And um, I think that we're in wave three right now. The only reason that I would worry is that if I saw high bearish volume on a daily chart, where like let's say that this becomes like a bearish engulfing candle on really good volume, or we get like a very powerful doji, kind of like this, but on uh, volume above the moving average, then I would worry uh, about Bitcoin's future, short-term future, that is. So yeah, um, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, yeah, just remember these points of possible res resistance the rule of alternation with the 38.2, probably down to 4,400, if, if, if 5K is uh, the resistance point for wave three. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you have any questions about how I do wave counts, any Fibonacci's or uh, volume, 
then uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching.